This is an OLED panel, 4K, 240 hertz, perfect contrast, and instant response times. It should make picking your next monitor easy, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. Asus currently has two of the best OLED panels that you can buy on the market right now in their PG32 UCDP as well as the PG32 UCDM. One of these is using a W OLED panel and the other is using a QD OLED panel. And at first on the surface, it doesn't seem like there would be a major difference between these two, but really, there's quite a bit that differentiates these two panels and they're going to appeal to different audiences. So today, I want to take a look at both of these to figure out which one is the best for you? Because the answer isn't super straightforward. So both the PG32 UCDM and the PG32 UCDP have very similar specs on paper. They're both 4K, 240 Hertz, have two HDMI 2.1 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4, and a USB-C connection that can be used for display as well as KVM functionality. These panels differ though in three key areas. The first and largest difference between these two is the actual type of OLED panel used. The UCDM uses a QD OLED, where the UCDP uses a W OLED. Now both of these are going to be similar in that they both have that same refresh rate and that near instantaneous response time to the pixels. However, they have some differences in how they display contrast, colors, as well as the screen coding that's used. One of the main reasons that people consider OLED is because of that perfect black levels that the individually lit pixels create on the screen. This is where both of these panels differ quite significantly. If you're in a light controlled room, both of these panels create perfect blacks and it really is quite stunning. However, this is where you notice one of the biggest differences between QD OLED versus W OLED. As soon as you add some ambient light to the room, the QD OLED panel starts to look kind of purple and gets raised black levels on the screen where if you compare it to the W OLED panel, this maintains those perfect blacks regardless of what the light looks like in the room. Now, if you're the type of person that only plays games at night, you don't have a window in your room, or you don't have any lights or other people that are gonna be doing things, then this isn't gonna be a huge consideration. But if you are the type of person that sometimes likes to play games during the day, or there's ambient light in the room, you are gonna get better contrast in general on the W OLED panel. Now, one of the other major differentiating factors between these two panels is the type of screen coding that's used. Now, this is a very polarizing thing if you spend any time reading forums or watching YouTube videos. And the general sentiment seems to be that glossy coatings are the preferred coating. I have to be honest, I don't entirely agree. I will say that the glossy screen on the UCDM does do a great job of creating some additional depth to the image. And because there's no film or filter between the panel and your eyes, you get a very clear, sharp, and vivid image. I would almost describe it as electrifying. Where I notice this most is actually when you're looking at a skybox with something in front of it. You just get a very clear image when you're looking at the bright blue sky and you have, you know, maybe blades of grass or something that are contrasting against it. The depth that you get on a glossy screen is really something to behold and is my preference when it comes to image quality. That being said though, it's not without its drawbacks. When you're using a glossy screen, it picks up a lot of reflections from any light source in the room. In my home office, I have a window next to my desk and this window, when I'm looking at the glossy screen, looks like I'm looking into a mirror and I find it to be very distracting. Now again, in perfect lighting conditions, this isn't gonna be a problem for you, but in my use case, it's definitely something that I had to consider and it was something that gave the matte coating on the UCDP quite an advantage. In addition to this, the matte coating also seemed to help my eyes when it came to eye strain. I am someone that is susceptible to eye fatigue and this is something that I do have to consider because I use this panel for both my work day as well as my gaming sessions. The matte coating on the UCDP made it much easier to focus on the content that I was working on throughout my day and made reflections on the screen less distracting at night. I found that when looking at the glossy screen on the UCDM, my eyes sometimes had a hard time focusing on what was on the screen versus the reflection. And that does over time create some eye strain. So which is better, glossy or matte? 
Honestly, there's not a clear winner. Both of these panels offer a great image quality, and though I prefer the way the image looks on the glossy screen, from a usability standpoint, the matte screen gave me some benefits that were hard to overlook. So for me, that's the winner, but depending on your use case, you really can't go wrong with either one. Colors is one area that the QD OLED really shines. The UCDM offers a wide color gamut, and this translates into more vivid colors and brighter colors. When comparing the two screens side by side, the UCDP struggles quite a bit, significantly when creating red colors and yellow colors. If a person didn't have both of these panels sitting next to each other, I don't think the colors are something that they would complain about at all when looking at either of these panels. But if I was picking one purely off of the color reproduction, the QD OLED panel on the UCDM definitely would get my vote because I do like the saturated, bright, vivid colors that it provides. One small thing that to me is actually quite impactful when comparing these two panels is the on-screen display. The UCDP being a newer panel has a little bit more refined on-screen display. The layout is just a little bit easier to get where you need to go. And specifically, I like to toggle the OLED care options on and off, depending on if I'm doing work for the day or if I'm playing games. And the menu options on the UCDM are really buried and harder to get to if it's something that you're gonna change frequently, where on the UCDP, they're right there and easy to access. The gaming features between the two panels though are near identical. The UCDP does put the word AI in front of these. However, they seem to be very similar between the two panels and generally they're not things that I use and I find them to be pretty useless overall. The one exception to that is the shadow boost feature. Now the two panels both have shadow boost functionality that allow you to go levels one, two, three, and then a fourth option. On the UCDM, this is called dynamic shadow boost and on the UCDP, it's called AI shadow boost. They both seem to achieve similar results and I think the difference between them actually comes to just the general algorithm that's used. But when I set the UCDP to the FPS mode, I find that it gives me a little bit better visibility than what I'm able to achieve on the UCDM, but I'm probably splitting hairs here because both of them really do improve the visibility when you're playing darker games like Escape from Tarkov. Now, I gotta admit, I don't use HDR very much. As someone who plays primarily shooters, I find that HDR is a bit distracting and my eyes can only take so much of that blinding bright fire or things like that on the screen. I tend to prefer the SDR image with those more saturated colors that you get when using a wide gamut display as opposed to the HDR image. That being said, both of these panels do have very good HDR implementations. I tested them both using their gaming HDR setting, and if I was gonna pick one over the other, I prefer the way that the image looks on the QD OLED UCDM over the W OLED UCDP. This mostly comes down to the brightness of the colors and the saturation that it has. It kind of emulates a little bit of what I see when I'm looking at that saturated SDR image, but in HDR. And when playing games like Cyberpunk, this is just something that I prefer, though the HDR on the W OLED screen does have advantages in certain scenes if you're maybe looking at something like a Starfield where that white subpixel really has the opportunity to shine, or in full brightness outdoor scenes where again, the fact that the W OLED panel can get just a little bit brighter, it makes those scenes look a little bit more punchy. Now, one thing that is similar between these two and also a major detractor for me is something that I wasn't even aware of was an issue until I got these panels sitting on my desk and that is VRR flicker. Now, VRR flicker is variable refresh rate flicker, and this is something that is inherently a problem with any OLED panel from any manufacturer. The UCDP does have a feature built into the monitor that helps with VRR flicker, but really all this is doing is limiting the refresh rate of the panel in which that VRR rate is effective and I still did end up finding that there was some VRR flicker on that W OLED display. That being said, when comparing the two panels, the UCDM displayed much more VRR flicker, at least in the games that I was testing. I tested this with Black Myth Wukong, as well as Escape from Tarkov, and you notice it predominantly in loading screens, but also in some darker scenes as well. If you're someone who relies heavily on VRR for your games, and it's something that you don't want to give up, I would strongly encourage you to consider the UCDP because of that VRR flicker mode, and it just inherently seems like the W OLED panels seem to perform a little bit better in regards to this VRR flicker where they're maybe not quite as noticeable. 
Lastly, I want to touch on one of the key differences between these two panels, and that is the 480 hertz mode on the UCDP. Now, this is a mode that I don't think is going to apply to a lot of gamers. However, if you are someone who's competitive minded, it is something worth considering. I use this predominantly in Overwatch, where turning this on really does provide some better motion clarity to the picture. Now, in addition to that, I set my in-game resolution to 200% to recoup a little bit of that detail that's lost when switching to that 480 hertz mode since it's only displaying in 1080p. How useful this feature is really does depend on the game and the anti-aliasing solution. On a 32 inch screen, 1080p doesn't look phenomenal, but if the game handles anti-aliasing well and gives you some upscale options, you can mitigate that detail loss to some degree and gain that additional motion clarity. Both of these panels do have an aspect control feature, which allows you to set the screen size to 27 or 24 inches down from the traditional or standard 32. I had some mixed results with this though. In certain situations, it seemed like the image looked really, really good and having the ability to set that 27 or 24 inch screen was nice for certain competitive games. However, I also found that sometimes the scaling just seemed kind of weird and the image did not look like what I would expect a 1080p or a 1440p image to look like at those screen sizes. Now, I did tinker with some of the settings in the NVIDIA control panel and setting it to use integer scaling did seem to improve the quality of the image in here, but it was still not quite perfect. And I'm not sure if it's something that ASUS can address with a firmware update, but it's worth noting that this option is available, but I don't think at least from my testing that it was flawless in its implementation. I really appreciate you checking out the channel and watching my content on these two monitors. I hope this was helpful in making a decision between these two. Really, they're both phenomenal and there's things I like about both of them. They have pros and cons, so there isn't a super clear winner. For me, the one that I'm gonna be keeping on my desk is the UCVP, mostly because that matte coating does work better in my environment and the black levels maintaining their dark inky black regardless of the ambient light is something that I really appreciate. But let me know what you think. Which one of these would you put on your desk if you were buying one today? Leave a comment down below, drop a like on the video and subscribe for more content like this in the future. And until next time, we'll see ya.